Good evening. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to Susanna uh, for inviting me to such a prestigious event and to Vera for helping me put together my first time, I guess, ever <laughs> a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'll just start off, uh, how, to, how did I get started in dancing? Um, I didn't have a choice. My parents forced me to do it. When I was three, I could barely walk properly, mouth agape on stage, in costume, dancing on stage with my partner. Uh, who dragged me around the stage. But um, it was part of the culture of the church I grew up in in uh, upstate New York. A um, lot of immigrants that came in the second wave uh, helped build the church from the first wave that, that came of immigrants. And uh, like I said, it was part of our culture. The style of dancing that we learned was Avramenko. Vasil Avramenko was known as the father of Ukrainian folk dancing in the north North America and in Canada. Now, before everybody, well, this is in a, a, uh, a Ukrainian event, a Czech and Slovak event. I'll get to that very, very quickly. Uh, my first introduction to dance was my mother teaching me in the kitchen, and then this officially learning the style of dancing through my church. Um, over the years uh, since then, I learned several styles of dancing, including ballet, jazz, uh, tap, no, not tap. No, not tap. Uh, it's, it's hard to remember so far back, uh, being of Eastern European descent, we did a lot of drinking after our shows, so you'll forgive me. Um, but ballet was the one that stuck with me the most. Um, we used to go to a lot of Ukrainian folk festivals and Slovak folk festivals, Czech festivals, and to see the trained dancers perform compared to how I was doing it, I was borderline embarrassed when I went to my first dance camp in the early 90s, and I see boys my age that were doing incredible dance steps that I couldn't do, and I wondered why I couldn't. So I took the ballet uh, heavy and did these folk dance camps uh, for weeks on end. We would wake up, dance from 9 o'clock till about 9 o'clock at night with only a break for lunch and break for dinner, where we'd take ballet in the morning, folk character class in the afternoon, and then we'd learn choreographies and steps in the evening after dinner. Um, Thankfully, I went to these camps, I, I met a couple of people, and then I was awarded a scholarship to the Tamboritsons of Duquesne University. They are the oldest performing ensemble in the United States, started in 1939 by Lester A. Pierce. Uh, I stayed three years there where I had the, the privilege of learning from several, several world-class choreographers, not only from Bulgaria, Serbia, Hungary, Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, but also Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia, I have a special place in my heart because my mother happens to be from Slovakia, Eastern Slovakia, from a very small village called Cholinne. Um, most of the residents there are known as Carpathian Rusins or Rusine, Rusinians. So that's my association with the Ukrainian to Slovak dancing. After I was graduated from Duquesne University, I spent three years three years traveling the United States with them, and I finally auditioned for the Puls Umelecki, Piduklanski Umelecki Ludovic Subor in Preshov, Slovakia. Uh, since its inception in the early 50s, I'm the only American to have ever been a part of the ensemble, and the only American to have ever choreographed. As you can see, I'm much younger and, and handsome there, and now I'm just older. Um, can't fit in that costume anymore because that's about 40 pounds ago. Um, so that being said, I spent a year with them and traveled, performed in Prague, uh, performed in Austria. I even performed in France with them uh, before leaving after a year. Um, probably the greatest, greatest part of my life was in the jewel achievement in my dancing career, I would say, uh, at that point, and probably even to now. Um, once I returned to the States, I started my own ensemble, which was based in Ukrainian dancing, but mostly in Carpathian folk dancing that uh, uh, bordered Ukraine and Slovakia. Just making sure, because I have a lot of pictures I want to get through. And when I, when I came to New York, uh, I became associated with a Limbora Slovak folk dance ensemble based here in New York City, which they've celebrated over 50 years. Uh, after 2002, I became artistic director until about 2007, um, teaching, actually, all of them were Slovaks. I was the only American teaching them folk dancing from Slovakia, from uh, Zemplin region, Gypsy, 
Um, it didn't matter, and then on top of that, teaching them and, and cleaning up their choreographies. From then, I used to also perform with my ensemble, even at Ukrainian festivals, I always represented something from the Slovak side uh, that I, I loved so much over the years. Um, and that's at a Ukrainian festival in Lehighton. This happens to be us at the Slovak Embassy in DC. Um, in between her extra minute and his three, I got four extra <laughs> minutes. This is us at the Kennedy Center with, I believe that's the Slovak ambassador at the time in 2015 at a beer garden in New Jersey. Um, these are the students that I, I teach now at the Limboracic School um, in Astoria. And as you can see, they're very little. When I came into this ensemble, they had no structure, no discipline, um, no, no technique. And it was a, a hard lesson for them. And I try to stay away from children because all of my teachers were from former Soviet republics, so they tend to cry a lot when I yell. But fortunately, they come from European parents who are relatively tough on them. And I've watched some of these children grow up from age eight to now they're in high school or have graduated. And uh, it's been a, a pleasure and a joy to, in my life to teach them. And on top of teaching the Slovaks, I have a Ukrainian ensemble in Long Island that I teach. And I was able to bring the two for our picnic festival in Long Island. And uh, everybody happened to enjoy it. Uh, the costuming on top of everything, if you saw from the first picture I showed you, the kids, they were all in one costume. We don't do Slovak dancing in one costume. It's a small country, beautiful small country that's so rich in culture, and they have tons and tons of costumes. And that was another thing that I had to bring into the fold to teach these children not only the steps um, from the various regions, but also what costumes go in it so they can perpetuate their own culture in years to come. Uh, this is the last festival I performed with them in, in New Jersey. It was the 41st or 42nd Slovak festival in New Jersey. Um, they were performing my choreographies, and I'm in costume with them. Um, and now my children, my four-year-old daughter, I have the honor of teaching her. And uh, my six-year-old son, also at our Ukrainian school. And the last thing I wanted to show, and thank you, Susanna, for su suggesting this, is little choreography that I've done with um, my kids' group, Limboracic. But anyways, that's my choreography, and that's my time. Thank you so much.